Hey y'all, this is Frank the Bigfoot, and you're listening to the Paranormal Punchers. Hey friends, welcome to Paranormal Punchers. I'm Mark. I'm Alicia. I'm Nash. No Dave, again... The servers in the Hollow Earth have failed, and he has to work today. Mm-hmm. He's like a superhero. He's, he's there yeah. to save the day constantly. I feel like he needs to <laughs> <laughs> get a, hang up his cape and uh, do something else. There. Yeah. Um, hey, on this episode, we're going to be talking about uh, the America's Dyatlov Pass, or also known as the Yuba County Five. Strange true crime mystery. Uh, this was a suggestion. From our buddy Johnny T, dropped this uh, on us in the uh, in our group page on Facebook. Yep. Nice. So thanks, Johnny. Uh, we also have, of course, listener feedback. We got three listener stories to do, so this should be a big, fun, exciting episode. Uh, before we get rolling, I would like to tell you guys a story. Do it. Ooh. So I was hanging with Ryan the other day. <laughs> I was at Funk. Uh, it was on the, a day they were closed. And just talking with Ryan back and forth. Ryan's one of, uh, is a brewer there at the Funky Town. Uh, awesome dude. Also has a podcast called No Sleeves Podcast. And we might have a conspiracy theory podcast together. Mm. But we were just talking, hanging out, and uh, somehow we came on the topic of the ghosts at uh, at Funk. Okay. And Ryan said there hasn't been anything for a long, long time. Uh, you know, any any weirdness, right? Any high strangeness. He said one day, uh, I forget when, but he went home and he, was, he just felt like whatever was at the, the building that he was dealing with, with the, the weird hauntings and the weird things that were happening, he felt it almost followed him home. Uh-oh. And he got really angry and went off and said, it is not okay. Uh, F you. And he said, nothing's happened since he laid down the boom wow. on the spirits at Funk. And he was like, you know. I I kind of miss it. Aww. Now, no. And in that sentence, the uh, women's bathroom, the toilet flushed. What? Which we were sitting, uh, <laughs> we were sitting in the back of the disco bar, which is that yeah. wall on the other side of that wall is the ladies' room. You could hear it loud as day. Well, whoosh. And I was like, oh, um, who's here? He's like, we're the only ones in the building. Oh uh-huh. And I was like, dude, the moment you said you miss it reminded me of that story uh, from author John Olson, uh, when he said his wife, they said, it is not yeah. cool to haunt me. It's not cool to mess around. Right. And then when he, she was like, ah, you know, kind of miss it or whatever she said, then all of a sudden it touched the back of her head. Mm-hmm. It reminded me almost like uh-huh. uh, the, uh-huh. the spirits were like, oh, wait, you miss us? Well, whoosh. <laughs> we are back. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that was pretty freaky. Yeah. We were the only ones in the building. Wow. On the, I mean, there were some people on the second floor. But yeah, there was no one in the ladies' room that toilet flush, and we both, it was kind of it was kind of funny. So I don't know, maybe maybe they're back. Maybe. Did you guys like bum rush the ladies' bathroom? That would have been awesome if you guys did. Both coming through the door, kicking down the door, <laughs> no sleeves. Both of you going like, "Who's in here?" No, we just oh we lifted our uh, our pints <laughs> to our mouth <laughs> and finished, uh, finished the beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, well, it's good. Not gonna get too excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was kooky uh, happening right when he said that. Mm-hmm. Now uh, I want to know if you guys heard about this. Did you hear Zach Bagans has a new book out? No. What? It's called Ghost Hunting for Dummies. Oh no. Oh. Here's a quick uh, description from Amazon, featuring expert advice on picking a haunted location, setting up cameras, and dealing with unwieldy ghosts. This book shows. How Today's Investigators Use the Tools of Modern Science to Study a Wide Range of Paranormal Activity. Hmm. Well, I I guess if there's there's room for somebody to make a book to sell to people on how to do this, I I guess he's the one that's going to do it, you know? Yeah, would you you buy this book? I don't know if I would buy the book, but I think it's a pretty good idea to make, to write the book. I mean, I feel like he's like just a huge name in the biz. I'm surprised he doesn't, maybe he has a few books already. I don't know. I bet he does. Uh, but I was like, I don't know. I'm going to put it on uh, my uh, Christmas list. Oh, I'm okay. looking at Lish like, hey, put that on the list. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see if, if, it, uh, no, if you need ideas for that, me. That's right. Because, okay. like, you know, I don't know. I, I think he's a pretty interesting dude. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, maybe the book could be a lot of fun, especially since he went with the whole four dummies kind of mm-hmm. angle. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm surprised that that book series never did ghost hunting. Right. If they don't, you know? you know, or, or if they don't have a like a trademark on that phrase, right? Something whatever for dummies, or it, c- I'm not going to bother looking it up, right? <laughs> but it could be part of that brand. It, yeah, he could that's be true. doing it with that's that true. brand. Yeah, true. Huh. There's probably a chapter on how to get possessed at every home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, huh. how, how to lift weights and intimidate ghosts. That's right. Yeah, that's another chapter. Well, yeah. I don't know. I kind of. I definitely want to check it out. It makes me kind of wish I wrote the book. Yeah, that's a really good idea for a book. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. See, there you go. Hopefully, Krampus brings it to you. He only brings like. Oh wait, no, that's the other guy. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, right. Let's jump into listener feedback brought to you by Parabox Monthly. Get a really awesome looking t-shirt and a mystery to solve each month. Use our code PUNCHERS and save 10% off your subscription. All right. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> just, I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> we heard from Liz D. Liz, your show is great. Love the humor and your opening conversations are, are ones I could join in on. Definitely. I know. I kind of wish I had Liz's number. I would have gave her a call. Like, all right. We'll Skype you in. Yeah. Right. You're joining this conversation. <laughs> yeah, here you go. And here comes the, here's, well, here's one we can all jump in on. From Johnny T. Hey, guys. And yes, said just like that. Oh, my gosh. Nash. <laughs> here's a beer idea. Okay. Alba Twitch, Apple Crisp. Mmm. Okay. Okay, uh, apples. Okay, yeah, uh, ab- apple crisp. So you need like a like a pastry side to it too. I could do something. What like would that. you put in to give you that that flavor of the pastry? Like some oats or yeah, you can kind of make it kind of biscuity depending on what malt you use. You could, I could even, I've even heard of people actually taking like graham crackers and just throwing it in after the ferments. So you just oh, throw some okay. graham crackers Ooh. in there. Yeah, so you could do a lot of apple, and then after fermentation, throw some so, so, throw some graham crackers in there. Okay. Would the apple uh, give it too much of a cider flavor? That's the balance. That's the yeah. trick. Because the, the 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 pastry side of it would be easy. You just do something and have it. You know, throw some graham crackers in there. But the apple side, you're right, because there's a balance between beer with a little hint of apple and mm-hmm. apple cider. Right. So that could be done. It could be done. Okay. Are you gonna try it? Yeah, why not? What the heck? <laughs> well, if he tries it, we'll let you know. And Johnny T, uh, yeah, I don't know how we can get you a sample, but we'll let well, you know how it tastes. Eh, that's just breaking some minor laws, but that's yeah. fine. You know, no big deal. But you just don't tell UPS what's in the box. Yeah, exactly. What's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> we heard from Randall Larue on YouTube of all places because I oh. do push out the um, episodes also to our YouTube channel. He says, this is in reference to our, uh, uh, what is that, the triangle up in uh, Boston, uh, in the Mass area. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just uh, fell out of my head. I Bridgewater know. Triangle. Thank you. Thank you. He said, used to live in Jersey, got friends in Boston and Springfield, love all the lore on the Bridgewater Triangle, weird stuff. Um, around that area, the Redhead Hitchhiker is always one of my favorite stories out that way. Had friends go out and try to find him in 2013, came back with weird stories uh, mm-hmm. In that area. Another one of my favorite stories comes all the way from Long Beach, California. Uh, I used to live uh, in Berkeley and heard a lot of weird stories uh, from DeForest Park. I would love to hear a show on the stories from that creepy place. Hmm. Keep up all the good work. Love your podcast. You ever hear of DeForest Park? I've never heard of that. No. Not, not at all. But at Berkeley, there's there's... You know, at some time, there could have been some really cool hallucinogenics passing through Berkeley. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So there could be anything in there. I don't know. Yeah. But we could definitely look into it. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Thanks, Randall. Yeah, Thanks definitely. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the topic right. ideas. I know some of the forests out there are really like old growth forests, you know, giant redwood forests. There's some serious old forests out there. So that'd be really something that we should look at. Okay. We heard from Rod W. Hey, guys. <laughs> You are one of my top three paranormal podcasts. Right. I usually I, I usually listen to <laughs> <laughs> I usually listen to two to three episodes a day. Ooh. First off, the spooky. Nineteen ninety three. My wife was living in rural Vermont. She and a friend were living in a tiny apartment above a garage. 
It was 4 p.m. It was dark, cold, and had been snowing off and on all day. She remembered she had left something in her car. She stepped out the door and onto the first step. She looked to the bottom of the stairs and saw a pair of red eyes staring at her. Oh, no. She heard no sound, but felt smothered in fear, panic, and lost track of everything. When she came around, she was on the same step, but the eyes were halfway up the stairs. She went back in the apartment, slammed, and locked the door. She told her roommate what happened, and they weren't able to sleep the rest of the night. Oh, my God. The next morning, they found no footprints, no tracks, and no marks in the snow. Neither of them knew what was at the bottom of the stairs, but they believed it was evil and intended to do them harm. Oh, God. I 100% believe my wife saw something, and it was evil in nature. Wow. Now for the polite criticism. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. I spent five years in the military and 20 years in law enforcement, so when I hear someone use the term clip in place of magazine when talking Mm. about firearms, it's like a rusty screw being pushed through my eye. (laughs) Wow, Wow, that's pretty yikes. Okay, okay. I would love to hear you guys discuss the Bermuda Triangle and Flight 19, the five Grumman Avengers that disappeared over the Bermuda Triangle. And remember, if it ain't weird, it ain't worth checking out. That's right. Rod, thank you so much yeah. uh, for uh, listening to the show, sharing that spooky story. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And definitely thank you for educating us. Uh, definitely. Uh, using the word clip uh, versus magazine. Right, uh, right. I, I, for one, will... Uh, Never mess it up again. Well, I, I will do my best to not say it again. I wonder right. what episode. Yeah. yeah, it was on. Maybe the Winchester Mansion one. Oh. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, probably multiple. Yeah, yeah. Knowing us, uh, thank you for your service. Thank you for protecting people out there, and thank you for enjoying our show. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. No, never mess that up again, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> magazine, 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 magazine. We heard from uh, Ian uh, at Link- Lincoln73 on uh, Twitter. Uh, found this podcast through Hillbilly Horror Stories Halloween special. Keep up the excellent podcast. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for you. listening. That's right. We were on uh, Hillbilly Horror Story. had a, a three-hour Halloween special. We uh, were one of the many podcasts that had a little 10-minute mm-hmm. segment. Yeah. So go check it out. I'm sure you probably have, people have heard of that show. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. If you haven't, go check him out. Uh, my boy Jerry over there, my mentor, he's awesome. Let's see. Ah, uh, here we go. We heard from Ray Bands ninety four. Uh, your Food Network uh, should be called Cryptid or Pudding Skin. Oh, okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep talking. I like it. No, that's all I said. Oh, Cryptid or Pudding Skin. Cryptid or Pudding. What kind of would that be? Like, I mean, obviously. Uh, if you get the answer wrong, you have to eat pudding skin? Hmm. Or is it like a double dare thing where you have to try to get through some giant pudding skin? It could be like this. Uh, Nash. Mm. Top five answers on the board. What is the name? Or uh, what do they call uh, a Bigfoot-like creature in Australia? Uh... <laughs> You get pudding skin. <laughs> you get the pudding skin. You get the pudding skin. <laughs> Lish, pudding huh. skin or cryptid? What do they call the Bigfoot in Australia? <laughs> Yowie. Yowie. Oh! You don't have to eat pudding skin. <laughs> oh, am I? Yeah, in the game, though, it would just be the, there would be no pudding underneath. Right. Oh, you gotcha. literally yeah. just, you yeah. just got to get the pudding skin. Right. Nice. Nice. So it'd be like a challenge, like get the right answer. You get money and you move on to the next level. If okay. Not, you got to eat. Okay. <laughs> or, or maybe there's something under the pudding skin, like those giant uh, worms or giant those giant maggots we saw. Like you got to push the, through the it to get to something. Yeah. And then what's there is you like have to a, eat it. There you go. Mm. It could be like grasshoppers. Oh, God. It could be like, yeah, some really <laughs> gross stuff. <laughs> no. So you want to get the right answer or else. Right. Mm. Thanks, Ray mm. Mans94. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your ideas. Thanks for being a, a patron. Yeah. I'll still take pudding skin. <laughs> you would you would you eat just the pudding skin? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, like potato chips. Sure, yeah. Dry them out. Eat like chocolate chips. 
Sure. Why not? I don't even know what to say. Mm. <laughs> it got to be good. I haven't tried it, but maybe I should mm. give it a try. We are from <laughs> unexplained dot reality. <laughs> Great show, guys and gals. Well, till you hear this one. Um, <laughs> Love the podcast. I've been listening for a bit and really love how you guys keep it lighthearted and fun. Very entertaining. And I look forward to every episode. Keep it up and I'll keep listening. Aww. Thanks. Yes. And we'll definitely keep it up. Yeah, thank you. I know. Uh, hey, we heard from Jay Christ. We just saw him at the bar. Uh, that was a fun episode in reference to the Bear Lake. Mm -hmm. Cast did a swell job. So you may want to check into recent discoveries of prehistoric crocodile bones in Colorado. Also, the many UFO sightings and cattle mutilations in southern Colorado mm -hmm. with regards to your alien genetic and species theories. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Cows and probes, baby. Cows and probes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what they're going for. Well, thanks, Jay. <laughs> uh, I guess we're going to be checking in uh, cows and probes. Cows and probes. We already done that. We haven't really done the probes, but we've done the cows mm -hmm. before or, or something similar where they're taking animals and mutating them. So, definitely sounds like a song. Mm -hmm. mm. Cows and probes. I wonder if we had cows anybody, you know, anybody near to us who could maybe write a song or play a guitar and write up some lyrics. <laughs> hmm. I bet we might know somebody who could help out with that. And we did hear from. Uh... <laughs> You're so entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we heard from Justin B underscore OG. Ooh. Justin B. Oh, like, I don't know if everybody can hear the dog whimpering. She's just so, she gets so like animated when we are podcasting. Think, yeah, she misses Dingo. I think we're too excited, and she gets so excited about it. Um, Justin, B, Justin B. OG. Hey, I was the dude that recommended Bear Lake, uh, the Bear Lake Monster. I'm sorry I forgot that last time. Uh, Justin, thank you. Thank you for letting really us know. Really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's a good stopping point in our listener feedback because we got three listener stories to get to on the second half of the show. So I can't waste any more time because uh, I'm excited. Uh, well, that wasn't a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to correct you on that. I was going to let you come do it on your own. I'll just edit that was part was like, out. wow, wow. I don't want to wait any longer. Thank you. Is what I wanted to say. <laughs> Jeez, I love all the listeners. They're like my best friends. Um, it is time to get to the main topic. That would be the America's Diet Law Pass or the Yuba County Five. Yuba County Five. Now, people call it the America's Diet Law Pass because it's sort of similar, but not yeah. really. Yeah. Like when we get into this, yeah. there, I mean, yeah, you have uh, mysterious deaths in the snow. Nobody knows what happened, but I think that's kind of where it ends as far as comparing it to the Die Outlaw Pass. Right. Now, now maybe before we dive into this, mm -hmm. because there's so much here, maybe we can do just a, like a brief synopsis of Die Outlaw Pass, because we covered it so so long ago, just to say this is what happened, kind of a thing to re-say, well, because we're using the name, the American Die Outlaw Pass. Or yeah, the, no, I mean, or, I wasn't. We were. I wasn't prepared to rehash no. that. <laughs> no, no, not, not a big thing, but just like an overview, just like a like a v super brief overview. What was it? Was it like nine uh, hikers? Or was it, was it either seven, seven or nine? Seven. Yeah. Uh, these hikers went into the uh, uh, rural mountains okay. up in Russia. Um, I think it was called the Dialogue Pass because uh, the one leader of the mission. Mm -hmm. um, that was his name. Oh, gotcha. Okay, but they went out there. One guy got sick. He couldn't go. Mm -hmm. Um. But the rest went, and they were all found dead in mysterious ways. Like uh, one okay. had like their head uh, crushed, one's tongue was ripped out. I mm -hmm. think another one's chest Ugh. was caved in, like yeah. with extreme uh, force. Force that are like, well, it wasn't like just a human that could have done this. But also, they had all ran out of their tents, barely had their clothes on. Uh, I think the tent was showing it was like ripped out from the inside. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a lot of theories. Like, what a lot of craziness. A avalanche. Uh, yeah. The, okay. Uh, the, the clothes they did find had radioactive uh, contamination. Yeah. Oh, wow. So there was theories of... Uh, All over the uh, place. A possible, like, some type of Russian uh, military thing. They were, Those kids went too close to something they shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. uh, the Yeti, some type of right. abominable snowman uh, uh, out there, trashed the place. Right. Uh, what else? What are some other theories? Uh, I feel like the the there was theories about the Russians, like like some of the government. Um, right. What I did you just like that? like I'm like sorry. poisoning them or radiating them or mind controlling them or something or yeah. oh and there's also like uh, like some type of uh, uh, 
sound wave that came down in there that forced kind of drove them right. a little uh, a little crazy. Um, avalanche, the okay. re- well, uh, potential reason they ripped out of their tent and, and mm-hmm. ran uh, unclothed. Well, I mean, they had like, te- you know, but they didn't have the proper clothing to be running around in the snow. Uh, and I know they just reopened it, so we're going to revisit it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if this is the first time hearing about the Diallo Pass, that will... You're not going to learn anything from what we just said. No. Right. Go, Go back to episode one. Way back to the beginning. And you're not going to learn too much because we, I mean, we just we we're getting just started in the podcast. Right. And yeah. we, right. did, we really didn't in- uncover as much as we really could have because we were trying to keep it to 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Which we blew that out of the water. We'll go two hours today <laughs> and we feel like it. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Episode one. That's what started Paranormal Punchers. Right, exactly. That's yeah. why I was kind of like, okay, so just to get a frame of reference for some craziness happening with all these people, because this was just just five guys, right? Mm-hmm. So what, now, Alicia, you've got kind of better notes than I do on this. So, <laughs> Okay, so on February 24th, 1978, there were five young men uh, from Yuba City, California. Uh, Gary Mathias, Jack Hewitt, William Sterling, Ted Weir, and Jack Madruga. Uh, They went to a college game Mm -hmm. uh, in Chico, California, which was about 40 miles away. Yeah, a basketball game. Yeah, it was a basketball game. Um, All these men, they had had actually met each other at a um, little community... um, What's what? Uh, what's it called? Center community center. Yeah, it was, it was something like that. Um, they all five of them had some kind of mental issue, um, but they all loved basketball, and so they were super excited to go this game. And the next day, they were actually going to be playing in a league game. So, like. They were just like really super excited to go to this game and then go to the game the next day. Yeah, so they were like jazz and they uh, they loved yeah. the game so much and that kind of bonded them together. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but all five of them never made it home. Hmm. So that's where it gets a little weird. Now I'm going to give uh, just some quick uh, deets on each person. Yeah. So Madruga, he was thirty. He worked as a dishwasher at a dried food company, a fruit company called Sunsweet Growers. Um, uh, his family uh, said that he was kind of like slow in his thought process. Because, uh, like, again, we said everyone had right. some type of, you mm-hmm. know, mental, uh, mental situation. Uh, he was an army truck driver from 1966 to 1968. And him and Matthias were the only two of the group that had driver's license. Uh, Weir, he was 32. Uh, now, his brother, Dallas, said he kind of lacked basic common sense. Like, one time he spent $100 on pencils for no reason. Um, that's a lot of pencils. Right. His parents... <laughs> that's a lot of pencils. That's a lot of pencils. Especially, what, 19, was it, 78? Yeah. Um, so, at, at, at one time, when his parents' house was on fire, he stayed in bed just uh, staring at the ceiling uh, while, it was, while it was burning and told his brother leave him alone because he had to get some rest for work. His brothers had to drag him out of the house. Oh, no. Sterling, he was 29. He worked at Beale Air Force Base as a dishwasher. Um, his mom made him quit that job. She found out some of the uh, uh, people on the base would, would get him drunk and steal his money. Oh, I know. No. That's not good. That sucks. Uh, and Hewitt was 24. And... Uh, Let's see. Uh, he couldn't read or write or use a phone, uh, according to his mom. Uh, and he was uh, very shy, had a speech impediment, um, didn't really like being away from home for extended periods of time. Right. And then there was uh, there was Matthias. This is uh, this this is he's way different. Uh, he was a singer in a in a local band. Played football at uh, his Mary- Marysville High School in the late 60s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, but things took a turn. So he was in the Army. Um, well, let me back up here. So when he was a sophomore in high school, he had a bad, uh, bad trip. Oh, yeah. Hallucinogenic trip. Mm. Uh, so, but, you know, so he started using drugs. He was in the U.S. Army in the early 70s. Uh, he got a sharpshooting medal. 
Uh, also, a, a, a wall arrest and a medical discharge for uh, paranoid uh, schizophrenia. Okay. Um, so why he, he was in sheriff's custody for his AWOL arrest in 1973, he called two sergeants and a deputy over to his cell. This was according to case files. They opened the cell, and he uh, walked out in the hallway uh, butt naked and punched one of the sergeants in the face. Oh. Um, why would you wear clothes for that? That's my question. Of course. Why wouldn't you do that? That's totally normal. Uh, well, he, he, he didn't like, he said he didn't like being in the Army, and he thought if he hit a cop, maybe they'd let him out. Right. Uh, and he had a lot of other runnings with the law, um, slew of bar fights, uh, complaints of him prowling at a local cemetery. Mm. So he had definitely, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of things going on. The cops said that he was well, I mean, well known to them. Yeah. Yeah, they knew him, had run in with him before. Yeah, because I know I, I, I had a, uh, back in the day, I had a friend who was diagnosed schizophrenic. Mm-hmm. And it it took me a while to kind of, I've always kind of tried, tried to get to know my friends, you know, and whatnot, and kind of have their thought process. And his thought process was exactly opposite to everything that I th- would imagine somebody mm-hmm. would be thinking or, or how you would react to something. Exactly the opposite. So... I can only imagine what it was like back in the day, you know, and, and my friend who, who was on medication every day, he could function, but it was still when we would talk and have a beer and talk, very, very different thought process. And I can imagine back then with hallucinogenics and other drugs involved. Right. Wow. Wow. They can, I can, I can't imagine what it would be like. Just the, the thought process for, for myself thinking, mm-hmm. oh, maybe I shouldn't do that is just completely backwards. Yeah. yeah. It's just amazing. Wow. So these five men, they left the game at like 10 p.m. Uh, they stopped at a nearby gas station and they bought some snack food and uh, before getting on the highway to go home. Now, and some chocolate milk and soda. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, or something like that. I'm like, okay. that doesn't seem appetizing. <laughs> chocolate milk? Heck yeah. Oh, okay. That's the best in the whole wide world. Well, we don't drink dairy. So I know. You know. It's, it's one of my things. Yeah. I love chocolate milk. Uh, Ted Weir's mother woke up that morning, and she noticed that her son had made it home. So she started calling some of the other families and found out that none of them had returned home. Um, so police, they launched an investigation. They were mm-hmm. trying to figure out, you know, where is these five men? Uh, and they did not find their car until, I think, two days later. Wow. And it was up on this uh, mountain pass that was not on their route. Um, it was out in the middle of nowhere. Like, there was no reason for them to even be up there. The car was stuck. Um, and it looked like it had been spinning its wheels, but it was fully functional. Um, so it could have easily been pushed. There was five men. They could have pushed the car like to more stable ground or whatever. Right, right. Um, it had enough gas, so it didn't. It hadn't run out of gas. Um, and there was nothing that they found on the automobile that made them feel like um, this car was not functional. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but there was no sign of the missing men. Uh, it was March. It was snowing. Um, so at that point, they were like, we're going to have to wait until it gets warmer. The snow starts melting because they just didn't know what else to do. They had looked in the area. They couldn't find any signs of these guys. Um, it wasn't until June 4th, there was a group of motorcyclists, um, some bikers. They discovered a body up on a unheated ranger cabin. Um, one story I found said it was a mile away from the car, and there was another one that said it was 19 miles. So I'm not sure. Um, everything I found, it was about 19 miles. 19 to 20 miles okay. from where their car was. Yeah, right. 19 miles on foot through a blizzard. Yeah. Right. Um, and it, they, uh, the cops, when they finally came up there, they, they realized it was Ted Weir. Okay. Uh, he was shoeless, lying on a mattress, and he had um, eight sheets kind of wrapped around him in a way that he couldn't have done it himself. Um, so either he was wrapped that way before or 
after he died. No one really knows, like, who did it, but uh, he was fully clothed. He just didn't have any shoes. Um, on the table next to the bed, there was uh, some, some of his uh, belongings, uh, and there was a wristwatch that had a, its crystal missing, which I'm not sure what that means. Do you guys know? Well, the crystal would have been like the watch face. Oh, okay. I didn't understand what that meant. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. It's because we're all used to... <laughs> Right, and digital bits and digital watches. I, and, yeah. I was like, I don't know what that means, but um, but it actually did not belong to any of the five men. Um, so they're not really sure if that belonged to maybe some of the rangers that were up there before, or if it belonged to somebody else. Nobody knows. So just as an FYI, back in the day, you used to be able to pop the crystal off of the front of the watch, the watch face, the, okay. the glass part, and use that as a magnifying lens to start a fire. Oh, mm. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, scattered throughout the cabin, there were some opened cans of military sea rations. Oh, yeah. Um, there were also some that were unopened. Um, but it was theorized that either Madruga or Matthias had both been there, and they mm-hmm. were able to open it up because they, they knew how to open all that kind of stuff. Um. There was no sign of a fire being built there, even though there was a lot of matches lying around and some flammable stuff like books and things like that. Uh, And there was also a propane tank, um, I think on the outside of the cabin, that was never used. It was completely full of propane. So, Hmm. like, they could have actually gotten some warmth. Right, right, right. Because the propane is there for heat or for whatever, for... For right. a stove, even. Right. Right. Uh, so Weir had two to three months growth of beard on his face. And I had to look this up because I was like, I thought I always heard that your hair continues to grow. Your when, hair and once your you, Once you die? Yeah. But uh, that's a misnomer, I guess. I thought it was just your nails. Yeah, that's what I thought. Maybe, is it just your nails? Okay. Um, your skin pulls back from the... From your hair, so it makes it look like it's grown a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. okay. But um, two to three months worth of growth. Yes. Um, I know that if I if I don't shave for about two weeks, right. you know, I look yeah. like a hairy mountain man. Right. So. Uh, he had lost nearly 100 pounds, um, was badly frostbitten, and had died of starvation, they found. Huh. Yeah, starvation and hypothermia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, his head, like, so it sounds like possibly he was alive for, mm-hmm. uh, for a several while. weeks, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or if not more, uh, considering the, the length of his beard, mm-hmm. uh, losing 80 pounds. Right. Um, yeah, but all the food was right around him. I know. Well, and that's the thing. Um, there was enough food in there for a small group of people to last for a year. Um, so the fact that he he died of starvation is kind of... Hmm. Bizarre. When he was when he was the one who was found all wrapped up, right, in yes. all the sheets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it was he fully covered head to toe, including his head, or was he like swaddled like a child where the head uh, stays out? That's a good question because I actually don't know. Yeah, I, I took it more like he was all covered up. Okay. Except his uh, feet because he was missing his shoes. Mm-hmm. Now they found uh, Matthias's tennis shoes there. Yes. But uh, Weir's shoes were ones that were missing. Right. right. Was that yeah, that was weird that was uh, found mm-hmm. in the cabin. Yeah. So I I'm, I'm assuming maybe he had better footwear than some I, tennis shoes to be mm, stomping around. Right. That's my guess. Maybe he had boots or something. Yeah, the theory. I I I'm no detective, so I right. have no proof that, that Matthias took his shoes. Well But it, it sounds like right. he ditched his uh sneakers, which were not gonna be good for walking in the snow. Right. No. He took his boots. Oh, right. and I we didn't mention this before, but all of these men they were not wearing the proper um, winter attire because they were not planning. They're going to a game. Yeah, they're going to yeah. game and then they were coming home. So they weren't planning on anything hmm. like this happening. Um, so none of them, per- they were prepared. Non, I'm sorry, none of them were prepared to be out in a winter storm. Yeah, in the middle of a blizzard. Yes. Wearing, yeah, sneaks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the following day, the bodies of Madruga and Sterling were found. Around eight miles away, um, Madruga's body, it was partially eaten. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, and I think it was like down a stream or something, correct? Did you find that information on our, or Well, there was two be... bodies that definitely the uh, right. the forest mm-hmm. uh, forest mm-hmm. creatures yeah. got to. Right. Um he Madruga was found with his hand clasped around his watch, which was bizarre. That's, yeah, that's a little weird. Um and Sterling's body was nothing more than like a skeleton. Right. Um and then two days later, the bones and skull of Hewitt would be found like strewn throughout the wilderness or whatever. But so the animals really got to that one. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, they never found uh, Matthias, his body. So. Hmm. Hmm. So the part that really jumps out for me is the the growth, the beard growth. Yeah. So like, was he? Was he there by himself? Was he there with a couple people? And and when he did pass, they they wrapped him to like. But who they? Well, they, so they maybe they wrapped him and then took his shoes. Well, they. I mean, uh, if you want to go to the lowest ha- lowest hanging fruit, right? right you right. think Matthias, right? Right. He he was never found. Mm-hmm. He already had a history of violence. Right. Right. Um, Took the shoes. Could he have taken the shoes, swaddled up his friend? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and split. Um, did did he did he do this? I, I think a lot of people point to that right, right. away. Yeah. Right. Um, I initially, you know, in reading this, I'm thinking to myself, okay, how they got there, who knows? You know, what happened when they were there? Mm-hmm. Because of the situation, maybe with their with their individual handicaps and whatnot, mm-hmm. and they're in the woods, and I, it took me back instantly to the uh, the Wendigo spirit. Oh, that was the first thing that popped in my head. Was like, was one of them a little receptive to the Wendigo spirit, mm-hmm. and that contributed to maybe one of them killing the rest or hunting them. And that would explain while they're out in the woods or because you have basically this cabin that has all the food, it has Mm -hmm. potential heat. So it seems like most of the people there might not have understood. Maybe they would have, Mm -hmm. but even if somebody was a little slow, I would imagine they would say, okay, well, I don't know how to turn the propane on, but I know how to start a fire. Right. You know, because the matches were there. Or, I, I don't know. I was just trying to think right. of <clears throat> scenarios. Me, um, well, f- first thing on the matches and stuff, like, uh, imagine walking uh, almost 20 miles in, in this blizzard, this freezing cold. Oh, you wouldn't be able oh, to hold the matches. Yeah, well, yeah you, would, you would have trouble right. doing that. Uh, did, did they yeah. search around and find the propane? Uh, right. You know, the one dude had trouble comprehending, uh, uh, like, the guy who was uh, laying in bed. Uh, looking at the fire, mm-hmm. uh, and his brothers had to yank him out. Maybe, maybe they just didn't quite understand. Like, wait, to get heat, I have to go out. I have back, to do this right. And this propane right. tank it turned this again. You do almost twenty miles in a blizzard. Like, you're Ugh. not going to be thinking a normal. You're, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, people with without I mean, any infirmity uh, walk. Yeah, walk twenty miles uh, in, on a beautiful day. Right. You're mm-hmm. still pretty exhausted. And oh, now yeah. amplify right. that by being cold. And your fingers. You might. You, you might feel the onset of frostbite. I feel like you. Uh, your your judgment. Everything starts to be, get right. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Now, um, let me read you something here. Okay. Uh. Because we'll go down this a little bit about Matthias, because I feel we have to. Right. Um, so, do, 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 uh, following a 1978 interview with Matthias's longtime acquaintance, Janet and Zara, uh, Yuba County Sergeant James Black wrote that Matthias had repeatedly told Anzara of a dream where he and several other people would disappear. And Zara called Matthias a very violent person. Uh, Hurting several men seriously, and that, and she said that he also hates women, according to this interview, uh, hmm. the interview notes. So I feel like a lot of people were d- immediately like thinking, well, based on his history, right? Yeah, uh, and the things he's done, like did did Matthias have any role to play in the death of right. these the, right. these four men he was with? Right. Well, and that's one of the theories that he had a schizophrenic episode. 
um, stress can cause, like even if you're on medication, because apparently he he was on medication, he had taken it that morning. Um, when you're under a lot of stress, sometimes it doesn't even matter if you're on medication. You know what I mean? Mm. So like he could have had a, a an episode where it, yeah, he was either causing harm to others or he was worried it was going to cause harm. So he was separating himself from everybody who, who knows at that point, but now uh, people theorize, is he still alive? Did he, right. did he do this and get out of there? Mm-hmm. There was an incident where he walked like 540 miles oh. from like Portland, uh, down to Marysville, I guess where his, uh, I don't know if his parents or his grandparents, but he survived by taking, uh, milk and dog food off porches on the way. Oh, so he's art and not well equipped or clothed. Right. So he's he is capable of uh hmm. surviving certain conditions. Okay. Okay, I was just doing some quick math here cuz okay. I okay. So I was trying to think, okay, well the, I, I don't know what led me to it, but I was thinking the one of the best ways to ever mess with somebody's mind, mm-hmm. okay, is sleep deprivation. Oh god, yes. Right? Yes. And it's actually one of the only ways to truly you know, break somebody mentally is deprive them of sleep. So I'm thinking, okay, hold on for a second. This game ended at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. You've got five guys uh, coming from a game. They were amped up. You know, they were driving back through through the road. They're probably having a great time on the way back. Something happens and they get derailed. I don't know how long it takes takes from where they left to where they arrived. Mm -hmm. But what I did find when I just looked up and did some quick math is that for a a person to walk on a moderate pace, sunny day on a sidewalk for one mile's worth of walking takes about 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. Okay. They walked 19 miles Mm -hmm. through a blizzard. So if you just do the math on just walking on through a sunny day, that's 3.8 hours. That's almost four hours on a sunny day to walk wow. 19 miles. Yeah. So on a blizzard. Oh, it's got to be tri- yeah, double, triple, quadruple. I was going to say, that's that's excellent time. Uh, 3.8 right. hours uh, on 20 miles. Yeah, and, on, a 20 mile, on a sunny day. Even on, on a, a, even on a good day. Yeah, on uh, a flat. For, and uh, we're talking like on a track, you right. know what I mean? Don't guys do marathons uh, <clears throat> in like four hours running? Right. Exactly. So, these, so you're really hustling at These five guys who are not dressed appropriately, who are, you know, forward, you know really fording ahead on uh, uh, through a blizzard, mm-hmm. that wasn't a four-mile track. I imagine like deeper mm-hmm. snow. No. Yeah, I'm thinking like... So it's going to Need a waste. A mile could take probably thirty minutes or well, more. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but I think the um, cabin was actually up the mountain, so like right. they had to yeah. go up. So we're talking, we're talking eight hours, ten hours. They started walking. I'm imagining at like eleven o'clock ish yeah. at night, and they were still trying to get to wherever they were going, like when sun, the sun came up. Right. You know, I mean, it was that long of a track to get there. And then right. and then when the, once they got there, oh, I can only imagine the mental state of anybody who would no. do that. Yeah. Uh, I think I had read somewhere that um, there was actually tracks from like a, a plow or whatever had plowed up to okay. the cabin. So I'm, I I believe they were following that. They, they, they saw the tracks in there and thought we should follow yes. this. Um, but I mean, if for me... If I got my car stuck, yeah. I would probably, because I feel like, um, what was it, like five miles or 10 miles down the mountain You'd turn around was and go back. like a, a, an inn or a resort or something. Yeah. So I feel like I would probably just go down the mountain instead of going up the mountain, but that's just me. But that's know. you with lo- thinking logically. Right. That's not a long day. You're tired and it's right. night and it's snowing and you don't know what to do. Yeah. And, and possibly the one person who... I don't want to say be taking the lead, but it sounds mm-hmm. like Matthias mm-hmm. might have been kind of saying, no, let's do this. Right. You know, because maybe, and who knows? Who knows? Who was there? You know, who knows? Yeah, I got more to to lay out, but mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to hold back because, yeah. Throw it out yeah. there. I've got a couple. Um, so uh, the, the police officers that were trying to. Uh, find these guys before they were found. Um, they were putting out like rewards for information. Mm-hmm. They were even seeing like psychics trying to like just get anything because they were like, we, we have no idea what these nothing. guys are. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, one guy, he um, called in, and his name was Joseph Shans. He claimed that he was actually on that mountain um, that night. Um, he got his car stuck in the snow. Uh, he was going up to, like, his ski cabin or something. Um, but he was by himself. He was trying to push the car out, and um, he ended up having a heart attack. Oh, no. It was like a mild heart attack. Yeah. So at that point, he got back in the car, and he was in, in pain, but he was like, I'm gonna just going to have to wait until somebody can come find me. Right. Um, so he, he sat there for a while. Uh, he f- said that two cars were up behind him. The lights, the headlights were on. Uh, people got out, were talking. There was whistling, right? Was it whistling? Right. Yeah. He heard whistling and he was like, what the heck? So he called out. He was like, help, help. Um, that is when they, uh, I guess you they shut the lady. One of the, one of the people was a woman with a baby. He, well, I haven't gotten there yet, but oh, spoilers. No, it, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, they shut the lights off and kind of either got back in the car or walked away or something like that. And then a couple hours later, he saw flashlights and he heard people talking and whistling again. And, yeah, he called out again, and uh, at that point, uh, they got into one car and drove off. Now, the guy said it was a group of men, and one of them appeared to be a woman holding a baby. Hmm. Um, he had to, uh, eventually, he walked down to the lodge. Yeah, his car, eventually, the gas... Uh, he ran, ran out, out of gas, and that's yeah. what was keeping him warm. So he was yeah. like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. yeah. So he ended up getting out of his car and walking down the mountain back to the lodge. He passed Yeah. Uh, the, the Yuba 5's car mm-hmm. on the way out. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why he was calling in, because he was like, I'm pretty sure I was like there. Yeah. I don't know what was happening. I don't know who these people were, but... But there was a there car was there. Two vehicles, and he thought one of them was a pip- pickup truck, like pip- a red pickup, pip- or a, yeah. a pip up, a pip up. Yeah, it's a special kind of truck. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. He said one of them was a pickup, and then the other one was the car, and and they got into one of the vehicles and drove off. Huh. Yeah. Um. Now, a store clerk called in and said that uh, that four of the men that she recognized from police flyers they had stopped in the store in a red pickup two days after they had officially gone missing what yeah this is after she saw that there was a reward for information uh, yes gotcha I just, okay. to, I just want to throw that out there. right yeah uh she said that hewitt and sterling had then used a phone booth and then um she said that they, well, they used the phone booth and then they drove off. Um, the store owner also corroborated this account, saying that two of the men had come into the store and bought burritos and soft drinks. Hmm. But convenience store burritos are usually pretty gross. So that calls. <laughs> 1978 to- convenience store burritos. Right. Yeah, that's what, what I'm saying. That, what is that? That's yeah. funky. I, I don't know. Maybe they were more real burritos. I don't know. <laughs> if anybody's been around in 1978 and been in a convenience store, please mm-hmm. write in and let us Dude, know. Dude, you, you want to know what's hilarious? Hmm. In the issue two of our comic book, yeah. I have a whole joke about uh, uh, four convenience store burritos in a microwave. Oh. Uh, there it is. That that we don't explain what happened. Just Lish reminds you we're not having that accident again. <laughs> See? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a little tidbit. I am working mm-hmm. on the second issue. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the story. I'm yeah, sorry. Back, right, right. back to the burritos. Uh so yeah, uh as far as theories go, um, because nobody really knows what happens. They or happened. They found four bodies. Uh one is still missing. Alive or dead, not really sure. Um, but the schizophrenic episode, um, there were uh, some people that say they just simply got lost and confused. Right, right. Um, and then there was another, that there, there was some kind of outside influence that was happening. Because um, I feel like we were watching a video 
they were talking about there might have been an altercation um, outside of the game. Okay. I don't have those. If it was like a heated game. Um, Let me let me uh, let me lay this out here. Um, That is one of the theories that possibly bullies uh, from that basketball game. Yeah. But in 2017, a person claiming to be Hewitt's sister-in-law posted uh, on a blog. Some blog. I don't have that details, right. but um, that uh, the the Yuba Five they witnessed an altercation in, in the parking lot after the basketball game between mm-hmm. a group of men and another woman. They stepped in in defense of the woman. Okay, and that led to a, a you know a fight, a hostile conflict, whatever. So she says that these guys threw Matthias off a bridge to his death. What? And then yeah. chased these guys, and, and this is the reason that these guys ended up going up on that mountain road where they've never been there before. There was no reason right. for them to go that way, but they were trying to get away from these. This, this what gang, sounds like gang this gang. The, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, so yeah, so they fled the mountain road, and you could see how they would, if their car got stuck, they got out and just kept on running. They were They found, found a track of something and went up that way. They found shell casings at the ent- entrance to this mountain road. So was somebody just shooting at the car as it sped off? Right. What was going on? So that uh. that we heard uh, on a video, so I don't have any mm-hmm. details of the blog. I couldn't right. find any reference to the blog. I couldn't find this blog. Yeah. But it did... Yeah, I thought this was very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That potentially they got in a situation right. with uh, some people that uh, chased them, right. causing causing them to panic, causing them to, to go up this road, get their car stuck, get out, and just start running because they were fearing for their lives. Right. Uh, there's also thoughts that maybe they picked up a hitchhiker um, and things <laughs> just went afoul. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a family member of I don't have that written down Um, they said that there was some force that made them go up there they wouldn't have fled off into the woods like a bunch of quail we know good and well that somebody made them do it we can't visualize someone getting the upper hand on those five men but we know it must have been they seen something at that game at the parking lot they might have seen it and didn't even realize they'd seen it so I think that hmm. that kind of cor- corroborates yeah, exactly. uh, that where there was uh, some bad dudes that uh, right. Right. were chasing them. Right, right, right. They came across something. They helped somebody. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah, I could see that. And a mm-hmm. larger gang was after them. Right. Hmm. Um, and then my last theory is okay. one that I kind of was sticking out to me. So it's, it's I guess, my theory and it's not even like a full-fledged theory it was just something i might want to pose to you guys um they were found in the plumas national forest Mm -hmm. um david polide polide no polides polides holy crap polides Polides. (laughs) well he's never coming on the show now i know (laughs) crap uh he has always kind of talked about all of these disappearances of people in national right. forests. Right. Um, he has never said like what he thinks it is. Um, it, I don't know if he even knows what it could possibly be, but there's a lot of people that go, that go missing. Um, I also found that there were Bigfoot sightings there and UFO sightings. Does it have anything to do with us? Probably not. But I wanted to pose. This. Yeah, I think that would be a stretch. Yeah. Um, well, now that I, I don't necessarily know because because the different states of decomposition of the bodies when they were found, mm-hmm. you know, the, some of them were slightly eaten, and right. that I can imagine. Some of them were where the bones were scattered across the forest. Mm-hmm. That's did, I, did they die at like different times too? Right. You know. Like, I don't, for, uh, they were, uh, look, on their, they found, the, of course, they found the one dude in the cabin, but they found the other three relatively close to each other, mm-hmm. almost like they were walking back to the car. Right. I feel like uh, something possibly, uh, I feel like I'm going, I'm going with the theory that some bad people mm-hmm. chased them, shot at them, 
scared them so much that they, uh, they when ran. their car got stuck, they panicked. They didn't bother right. to see how easy it might have been able to push it back out. Mm-hmm. They panicked. They ran. They were fearing for their life. Okay. They managed to maybe possibly get to that cabin. Mm-hmm. And then maybe uh, because of that trek, uh, one of them possibly sick, not doing well, or they're right. freaking out. Uh, maybe they wrapped the one dude up. Trying to keep them warm. We're going to get help. Bro, we'll be back. Uh, let me take your shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me take your shoes because... You've got the good yeah. shoes. Uh, and on there, trying to get back. I mean, the elements. We're talking about a blizzard up in the mountain pass. Like, unprepared. No, Not the right... They're not wearing anything that's going to help them survive this. Right. Supplies, they, you know, you're right. I mean, imagine running a marathon. Mm-hmm. In a blizzard. Uphill. With, in a blizzard. With no water, mm-hmm. no food. Right. Mm-hmm. Completely unprepared. I think they succumbed to the elements. Uh, really, and, you know, again, uh, looking at this one map where they showed the, where they found the bodies, mm-hmm. they were very close to each other. Yeah. Uh, you talk about the de- decomposition of the bodies. Well, if some animals got a hold of one. Correct. So didn't, yeah. What happens to a body when it's under uh, snow for three months. Right. How does it deteriorate mm-hmm. when the ice melts? I don't know. I, I don't. I can't lead towards any right. paranormal. I think uh, some some bad mm-hmm. dudes, uh, but cause how, this. Uh, but then, how do you explain the the two th- two to three months of the beard growth? If if you're well, if no, you, he 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 was still living. He was in that cabin. That, that maybe he was like in a coma and they thought or something like that. And that's what led to him starving. But maybe. you you wouldn't survive for two to three months without food. Or water. Or water. You yeah. wouldn't survive that long. Is there any food. evidence he didn't have any of the food that was there? They found, the, uh, they found well, he was some all, cans that were open with like a, one of those uh, crappy army uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, those military keys can openers. For, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so... But he was fully wrapped up by an external force that wrapped him up. I yeah. I didn't read anything that he was wrapped to a point he couldn't get out of it. Like he was wrapped okay. up so tight he was immobile. I thought I read it as in he had this many layers on him. Right. Well, oh, okay. and I think the one window to the cabin was broken. So I think that's how they got in. Yeah. Um, they so it was like freezing cold in there. There was nothing to like keep any cold from like out. right outside. Yeah. yeah. And one so, theory on why they didn't burn books and stuff because they already broke in, and maybe they were just like scared, like oh, we already broke in, we're going to get in so much right. trouble. We yeah. can't burn these books, we're going to get in so much trouble. It, it, mm-hmm. it is possible. I've hmm. never been in a situation right. like that. Uh, right. And even what uh, because when you get hypothermia, doesn't mm-hmm. it make you do kooky things like take all your clothes off? Yeah. Right. Like so, I don't even know what. Well, and I feel like you know, one of the guys... Physically, how you would be suffering. Uh, mm-hmm. He uh, had to, like, get permission for, like, anything um, in his life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, I wonder if he just was, like... I he had to be told what to do exactly. Yeah, for everything. Yeah, so he was just like, I, I don't even know what to do. But who knows? Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's still a mystery to this day. Nobody yeah. knows. Nobody knows. And, there, Ma- and there's a lot of theories out there. If oh, Math- yeah. Matthias is if Matthias is still out there, if he if he fell to his death off a bridge, they would be able to find the body, mm-hmm. unless it fell into yeah. a river that was so that deep and stream that went out to the ocean. Yeah, I don't know. huh? I don't know, but there's a theory that uh, I one of the boys again. Don't quote me on this. Uh, because I can't remember 100%. Obviously, I don't know why I didn't take notes. Um, <laughs> there was also a theory that one of the boys had uh, upset somebody in town. And so oh. possibly mm. they were jealous over something. And uh, he could have been responsible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, I so, know- but again, when something like this is so mysterious, you're going to have a lot of theories start to pop right. up. So who knows right. if any of these? Yeah, I know some of the um, uh, authorities, they, they believe that uh, they'll find Matthias at some point. They just haven't, haven't yet. But it's, like his body's out there. It's been a while. Yeah, it, it's, it's been, been a it's been yeah. a fair amount. It's been a forty some odd but years. But I mean, at this point, there's not going to be much to find of him anyway. You know what I mean? Right. Right. But, hmm. Anyway, any any uh, any final thoughts mm-hmm. on this case? I was originally thinking like a time dilation or something like that to to stop time for the beard growth, but yeah. I just don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. 
Yeah, I'm not a detective. Yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. I only did research on the internet, so I, that's all I have. It's all true from the internet. Come on. <laughs> but uh, I say it's uh, it's uh, wicked sad mm-hmm. yeah. um, that, that these men lost their lives. Right. Uh, we don't know why. Their family doesn't have closure. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly a mystery, and hopefully someday... You know, somebody is able to solve it. Right. Yeah, hopefully it's answered at some point, yeah. at some time. Wow. Yikes. Yeah. That's crazy. That's wild. Well, so the moral of the story is, if it's snowing, just just don't go up the hill. <laughs> just just drive to the nearest motel, whatever, call the family, call the night, yeah. have a beer or six, and just, <laughs> just you know... <laughs> So hunker down. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. Have a beer or six. Uh, find yourself a, a hotel room and uh, a television, and we'll see you in the morning. Oh, man. <laughs> Make a phone call and uh, stay safe. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see you after this break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Ah, what a beautiful morning. Rise and shine, friends. We're looking for Bigfoot today. <laughs> Oh my God! What was that? Is that Bigfoot? <sighs> no, that's just Nash. He's a real bear in the morning before he gets his coffee. Here, Nash, I made a fresh pot of Moses family coffee. Their original roasted pecan is amazing. Mmm, mm, yum! This is amazing. Bigfoot's right behind me, isn't he? Run! Run! Ah! Go to mfjerky.com and use promo code SPOOKYJERKY15 to save 15% off your entire order. Moses Family Coffee, the best way to start your paranormal or normal adventure. All right. Again, Johnny T, thanks for the topic idea. That Definitely. was a yeah, true crime, unsolved crime, uh, kind of, yeah. Intense. Unsolved mystery, it's yeah. Just, there's so much. Um, yeah, go look up more information yourself because mm-hmm. you, know, uh, you know how much information we, we cover it there. very in depth and <laughs> with total accuracy. Oh. No, that's not, yeah. every time. Do not quote him on that. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't talk about pudding at all. No, but uh, that'll be rectified on oh, the second half. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> uh, we gonna, we're going to do some uh, listener stories. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> we have one here. I'm going to start this off with the one from Alberto. Okay. Hey, friends. Hola, amigos. Nash rules. That's right. <laughs> Alberto. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I would like you guys to do an episode on the Coral Castle in South Miami. Hmm. This place is absolutely amazing. It's a small castle structure that completely is completely built out of local limestone. The guy that built it was a scrawny 100-pound person, supposedly with no machinery at all. It was built in the 1920s. It's been open as a mu- museum since then. It, 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 Boy, I got that one all jumbled up. (laughs) It's been open as a museum since then as well, and it's still open to this day. Mm. I've seen it myself several years back with my wife, and we're both astonished on how amazing this place was. It's very small, not very big. You can walk around in about two hours max, depending on your uh, mojito level, Mm -hmm. uh, from your South Beach party last night. There were rumors that he somehow harnessed the powers of the pyramids to levitate some of the massive wall structures to build it. But recently, and there are articles that has been debunked, that no magic or levitation had been used. The actual history is absolutely amazing of this place, and there was even a music video that was filmed here. I'll leave that part as an Easter egg for you guys to find Ooh. out who made the video here. Uh, he has in parentheses, wedding. Please check it out. Uh, Hopefully one day in the future, you guys can uh, make an episode about it. Love your crew. Your show is great. Uh, Keep up the awesome work. Even here in Miami, it's all about the pudding skin. That's right. Not the flan. (laughs) Pronounced (laughs) F-L-A-A-N-N. 
It's a type flan. of dessert. Flan. No, nah, no, no flan. flan I put no. the pronunciation uh, this way so you don't uh, get a group of Cuban assassins <laughs> waiting for you, waiting to kill you when you get here. Yikes. So we all say, hey, we need some flan. You got any flan down here? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alberto. Yep. Alberto is also Art Designs 305. No. Ah. Okay. Okay. Right on. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Mm-hmm. So if you use no machinery to create out of limestone, right? It was limestone, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So there's, I mean, I, he's got to do it with a hammer and a chisel or something like that or a pickaxe or water, mm-hmm. which it, it would be tough with water. It might take a little while, but if you put enough water in your mouth and you spit it at it, mm-hmm. you know, slowly over time, you'll create a crevasse okay. and you could just create a giant, uh, no, it probably didn't do it that way. I'm just thinking, hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, that would be really interesting to look at. Yeah. Maybe to have putting animal hito as we're going through it. Oh God! Mm. Do they have mint? Do they have mojito pudding? I imagine it's been made. Yeah, that sounds like something. That yeah. sounds like something that would be good. I, I, I I'm into it. Let's do it. <laughs> uh man. <laughs> well, in that no, in that time, I'm looking up because I thought the the clue that he gave us wedding. Yeah. It was Billy Idol. White Wedding. White Wedding. Yeah. How? When he drove through the glass. That was the first video I ever saw on television. Did you know that? On MTV? Really? It was White Wedding. Billy Idol. Ah, we played that song briefly in a band I was in. Yeah, see? There you go. So then you do know somebody who could write a song like I asked about before. Nice. Right. Good. Good. Right on. (laughs) Right. (laughs) All right. We have a story from... uh, John P. John P. We just got this one. Yep. Hey guys, love the show. Some of I am a so I'm a volunteer fo- firefighter for my community, and I wanted to share some stories from my nights on standby. There was a really bad accident in another jurisdiction we usually assist, only a couple miles away from our station. I missed the first truck and the second, so I was on standby with a couple others at the station until we either got dispatched or told to go home. About 10 p.m., still no word from command, so we all head to the game room to play some pool and cards. Not even 10 minutes later, we hear sirens from one of the trucks. We all rush back to the engine bay to see our medical truck disconnected from its charging port and running lights and sirens. Nobody else in the building except for the five guys that were in this, the game room. We shut the truck off, reconnect it so I so it could charge back and head. I'm sorry, reconnect it so it could charge and head back. This happened twice that night. We finally got a call telling us we were good to go home around twelve o'clock. On our way to the door, one of the probies goes white as a sheet. We ask what's wrong. And Jay turned around to see our tanker door is open, and then it slowly shuts. So yeah, as if fighting fires wasn't hard enough, now we got to form our own Ghostbusters team to deal with whatever (laughs) is messing with us. If you guys want to hear more stories of calls, either paranormal or just plain weird, let me know. I got a ton of stories to tell from dealing with... um, Methed out rednecks mm-hmm. to crazed PCP patients to people grabbing me, screaming to get their computer out of a burn house because their homework file was on it. <laughs> Always a pleasure to listen to your podcast. And you got one station here in uh, Del- DE, Delaware? Delaware. Okay. Who passes the time with our comedic podcast? Remember, it's not weird. It's not worth checking out. If it's not weird, it's not weird. Yeah, you say that like uh, at the end of every episode, and you just... I missed a word. I'm sorry. John Party. P.S. If you guys want some of our station shirts, I can try to get you some. Oh, yeah. That'd be fantastic. Thanks, John. Uh, To everybody at the station, hey, thanks for uh, keeping people safe, helping people out, fighting fires. Definitely. Um, My brother's a career firefighter. I know it's it's not easy. No. It it takes... It can uh, can be yucky. Takes a takes a strong person to put their lives in the line for other oh, people. Yeah. So thank mm-hmm. you so very much, and we would be honored to have a station shirt. Yeah, definitely. Um, even right. like we'll hang it up here in the studio. Oh yeah, right. Uh, and if you want, we'll send you paranormal punchers. You can hang it up in the uh, in the station. <laughs> right? and, and hang it up in the <laughs> firehouse. That's right. That's right. Right above the pool hall. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I hope you're doing well. Yep. Yeah. Stay safe out there. 
Okay, so the next story is going to fall to me. Uh, it's from Gavin. <laughs> now, I'm just going to always, as always, apologize in advance because I'm not the best reader of the stories here. And I don't have my glasses on either. So we're going to dive right in. Uh, Gavin, uh, writing this while sitting on the bus, listening to episode 76. So excuse any poor spelling as the bus bounces along. I uh, mentioned a couple of weeks back that I had a story or two to pass along. So here we go. My auntie lived in a small township called Weston outside Newcastle, Australia. Uh, her house was on the edge of a, on the edge of the bush and was an old mining area and was surrounded by fields. Uh, it was an unusual layout for the house in that the bathroom was actually off the kitchen area. Well, that makes sense. I mean, you have something to eat, and you got to go take care of it. You oh know God. what I'm saying? Are you going to do, like, commentary as you read it? Because that's, not, that's not in the letter. Oh, oh no, no. That's, didn't that, say that. That's me. That's just me adding to it. Uh, so when you opened the door from inside the bathroom, uh, you were looking straight into the kitchen. That seems perfect for me. Uh, my auntie said one day she had a shower and got dressed and opened the bathroom door. Standing in the kitchen was a figure of a man, approximately in his late 40s, wearing what looked like an old smoking jacket. She gasped and, fi- and the figure turned to look at her, then vanished. Uh, it was the only time she saw the figure. Many years later, a relative was visiting my auntie for the day. Uh, my, my auntie had to go shopping. The relative offered to stay behind and tidy up the kitchen a little bit. After my aunt left, the relative started doing the dishes. Uh, the sink had a, had a window above it, which looked into the backyard. After a few minutes, they saw a man walk past the window and thought, who's that? Uh, they went to the back door to greet the person, opened the door, and no one was there. The relative looked around, uh, looked around the backyard and couldn't, couldn't find anyone. Uh, they then thought about my aunt's story about the man, the man in the kitchen, and then realized they didn't hear the sides of the gate open, uh, that someone would have to go through to enter the backyard. And the gate was extremely noisy, so it, no, it, it made sound every time it opened or closed. That <laughs> gave them the chills. Uh, nothing else was ever seen to my knowledge, and during the time... I nothing was ever seen to my knowledge, and during the times I stayed there, nothing ever happened. It still freaked me out uh, at the time, as I was a young kid when I was told this. Anyway, keep up the fun work. Hashtag Team Pudding Skin FTW. What's up? <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Gavin. <laughs> well done, sir. For the win, baby. <laughs> Hey, thanks, everybody, for sending your stories, your uh, topic ideas, your feedback. We absolutely love it. Um, Mm Parablepunchers.com. If you find ways to contact us, please do it. Want to leave a review on Apple Podcasts? Because that's the only one that really has reviews. Do it. Do it. (laughs) You know, and I forgot to mention this earlier, because you just sat here and drank a... uh, small little crowler of... uh, Mini growler. uh, mini, Mini growler. Mini growler. Of you're working on uh, the next Paranormal Punchers beer, that, the uh, beer from my chupacabra. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, it's made. It has uh, corn. Yep, flaked corn in it. Uh, it has some wheat in it and some American two row. And I and I put a hefty hefty helping of uh, agave. Oh, oh, thank you, agave. <laughs> wow, this good beer, man. I put a little too much agave in there, so it made the beer uh, ABV a little high. Did you mm-hmm. say Anaheim pepper already? No, no, not yet. Not yet. I was getting to it. Sorry. Mr. Spoiler. I know. Oh, man. Spoiling things all night. Yeah, so it's got a little high <laughs> ABV with the agave, but the, and I threw one roasted uh, Anaheim pepper in there just to throw a little roasty pepperus. Pepperus majoris. Now, let's, uh, let me clarify when he says a little high. It's 10%. It's yeah, it's 10%. like it's like 10, 10 and a half. It's a, it's a strong beer. It's strong. Yeah, you got to dial that back before we, mm-hmm. could, uh, before we put it on. Uh, that's what happens when you drink <laughs> That's 10%. exactly right. <laughs> exactly. We got to dial that back before it goes on yeah. tap at Mood. Yeah, this is, this is version one. The next version will be a little bit more smooth, a little more refined. Yeah. Yeah, but it came out clear. It poured clear. Uh, yeah. Clarity is a big thing. Um, even though it had been in a in a growler shaking around for an hour drive, mm-hmm. even then it still had a little bit of head left on it. Um, so yeah, so I'm I'm improved with some of the. I'm happy with some of the improvements on the logistics of the beer, but now just working on the flavor and fine tuning it. Yay! 
Excited. Yay! I was really hoping we were having an easy drinker at like 5%. Right. Percent. That, that's not a, a little... Chupacabra, man. It means you're sitting back and enjoying it and thinking, wow, this is really nice. And then something bites you in the ass. <laughs> it's the Chupacabra, man. <laughs> it's the Chupacabra. It bites you in the ass and you're like, oh, what is that? And then you find yourself passed out in the And then floor. you're like you're like on the floor going, oh, it's a Chupacabra. Yeah. You're crawling into your suitcase <laughs> and Johnny Depp's throwing you off the... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I can't wait till it's out. Can't wait to get the T-shirt done. Yep, should be awesome. Do you realize that the uh, the next episode we record is the last episode of the year? It oh. is our holiday episode. Oh, right, right. Should be uh, a lot of fun. We are going to have uh, a couple special guests. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are all going to tell uh, spooky ghost stories mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. the fireplace, Ooh. bringing back that 19th century tradition. Telling uh, ghost stories on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. We're going to do it. We're going to have, a, uh, like I said, a couple special guests. We might, we'll have a little musical uh, break uh, from uh, my boys up there in, in uh, Worcester. Mm-hmm. The Deadites. So, in Worcester. 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 Massachusetts. Yeah. Worcester. 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 Yeah. Worcester. Worcester. They're going to drive down and beat the crap out of us. we got to stop that. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that. So, be- <laughs> I like the back and forth of us saying Worcester. I think that's really nice. <laughs> it should be wicked awesome. And I'm excited. So as we say around here, if it ain't weird, we don't say that. If it's not weird. <laughs> it's not worth checking out. Pitter patter. <laughs> <laughs>